then uh, we'll go to the sorting algorithm so this they are he's tested in uh, many of the papers mostly you are going to get only one or two marks if it is there into the mcq if it is available in second paper question uh, then a trouble sorting is arranging a set of values maybe numbers or letters into an order basically we go for alphabetical order or the the quantity order if i have a set of values like uh, 20 then uh, 35 even uh, 15 sometimes 2 and 9 how do you sort them in the ascending order what is ascending smallest to largest descending is largest to smallest so when i do the sorting what would be the value uh, comes at first nine no sorry two then nine after that 15 then 20 and 35 so this is what uh, the way we sort it okay now next thing is can you remember that uh, when you have a list now this is sorting is when you have the list uh, as I said, the x equals, I put this into list 20, 35, 15, 2, comma 9. Can you sort them easily? Yes. That is going to be x dot sort. Then no worry, this will uh, create y. Now y would be a list where they are arranged into the alphabetical order 2, 9, 15, 20, 35. So you get sort. Okay. Then what is this sort? X dot sort, what is that? You know, I want the correct technical name. This is a function. Built-in function or user defined function. Built-in function. Then within this function, don't you find that? They have written some instructions. Python people have written some instructions to mention how to identify the smallest among this set and put that into the initial level. Then find the next largest, put that into the next level. Do you understand that though we use this just easier way, there should be a lengthy statements to be written in order to do this job. This is a work done. There should be activities going on. Those activities are not known to us, but they'll do it for us. Now we are going to learn the specific algorithm how this sorting is done. Whenever value set is given, there should be algorithms to find the smallest and put that into the front. Next smallest and put that into the next one. So then this swapping, this rearranging has to be done. We should know how it is going to be. That's how the sorting algorithm is. You understand that? Right. So why do we need to learn this? What to do? Now you are the basement thing. Now make a man naaki anna. Kathamai these algorithms will improve your thinking power. Right. So especially how to make programs, especially when you are going to the industry, uh, when you make programs in the software field, uh, then you have to think and implement that algorithm in that specific problem. So then when you have these algorithms, just like sorting algorithms and many more standard algorithms, so then uh, you will get into a certain track. This is the way we have to think. This is the way we have to implement it. So then uh, this is quite complex, uh, but can't help. Uh, we have to learn it. So this is the one I'm going to explain you. First one called as bubble sort. But I'll explain how this bubble sort work at first. Then we'll try to implement the code. All right. Uh, first of all, I'll just go for some set of values. Uh, as I said earlier, the value uh, 20. Now, in the, in the Python incident, it's better if you go for list order, data structure, then it's easy for us to uh, handle them. 20, then I may say uh, 13, then you say that uh, 9, 2, um, as a last thing. These are the values to be sorted now. You understand that? Now, without going to the Python, I will just explain the algorithm, how the steps are going to be. In bubble sort, this is what the idea is. Bubble, what is bubble with English? Bubbling, popping up. 
right so then what we do here is simply i'll explain you don't understand this at the moment we'll see bubble sort means what we do here is out of these values given here agand out of these values we are going to bubble the largest value available here will bubble whatever the largest value we have here and then i'll just put a 9 here and 13 there larger value is bubble and that is going to be placed on to the right most place and that's all next one is from the rest we will find the next largest and bubble it then we are going to the next level right so simply means that we will just search the entire list how can we search from there already we just search the entire list here 1 2 3 4 5 5 5 items are there we find the largest here what is the largest here 20 So we do some statements. Then place that largest on the rightmost. Then here twenty will be there here. Why have the rest of the values available here? We just say that they will be available in this order. Now it may not be twenty uh, and not ten will be somewhere here. Then this is the largest. We did. Even better, we will check the rest of the items. Out of the rest, now we don't need to worry about this one. That's the largest thing. That's in the corner. Then from the rest, I will bubble the next largest. What is the next largest? Ten. And that is also moved into the next position, bubbling the highest and keeping that in the next position. Then my next arrangement will be: this is going to be twenty, this is going to be ten, and the others will be there: thirty, nine, and uh, two. Now these two are uh, already over. Then the rest is again search and find the largest. Hurry. Then uh, this is the last. Then next one two nine uh, thirteen ten and twenty. Then again we find that this is the largest. We keep it. And again uh, from the rest we will find the largest and keep it. If not, I will stop it and keep it. Now uh, this is a sorted situation. That's how the bubble sort works. Got the idea? Yes, yes, yes. When you uh, second one, this third, fine, fine. That's a mathematical error. Thirteen is uh, really uh, larger than ten. So in the second pass. Uh, we have to put thirty uh, here, not ten. Thirteen uh, is put there, and then uh, the ten likewise. Now you understand what's going on there. Right? So in uh, highest is pop there, next highest from the rest is pop there, next highest from the rest is pop there. Bubbles or T stand. Now you know the method. Then we need to find how this is going to be done, and then we'll implement that algorithm just like a flowchart, pseudo code into the pipe. Now one more thing: then how many values should be sorted here? How many values are there in the uh, list? Four values or five values? Five values. How many passes did we have? How many tests we did? We have four, right? We have five values to sort. Five values. We went along with four passes. Why? The last cell. When you move this, no need to uh, shift that again. Here we have. If you have five values, four passes. Ten values. Now how many passes are there? Nine. Right. Uh, before going to the relevant uh, code, I'll just explain in this way. Uh, again, now I'll explain in detail how this work is done. How to find the largest and put that to the rightmost. Okay, uh, I'll explain that in this row. In then that's easy. Uh, first of all, we'll uh, take this number, right? So I'll take this number. Uh, I'll label this as zero, one, two, three, four. They are the indexes we have. I may call this list as X. You understand this, right? Then I may take X zero at first. 
the first item in the list is taken this is going to be compared with the next number i'm going to do the first pass now first pass is finding the largest here and putting that in the rightmost position correct then to do that what we do in the algorithm is whatever the first number available is taken that's 20 so then that is identified by the list x 0 by you all got it then we check compare that value whether this is larger than the next value we don't know which one is larger right the okay ila prashna avirenne then apita pude when you see this list you find that 20 is larger right then we can have to move it but in the computer they don't know what are the other values in the list they don't know about therefore we have to check each and every here and find who's the largest ehem nabi large ekkana hoyanne panthi inno okoge mu usama ekkana kawuda kiyala hana koy ma kohomada mamai nimalu ekka balana nimalu usai ena mata kiyana balanda panthi okoge ma nimal tama usa kiyala no ne so then i compare with nima so then nima and tama then uh, these two uh, is the tall then i check with some other person and find that these are tall okay then uh, this person is taken and compare with the other person and this is found as the highest correct so then what we do is we compare to and find the largest among them we found after that what do we need to care about the short person we need to pop up the highest one me then again usa meya da kota gana kata karana und should we consider this short person no i just remove that then this largest person is compared with the next child next child with this comparison i found that not you you are the highest how do we got it then that highest is compared with now this highest is called as b say that that b here is b b is compared with the number c उटेक्ट Uh, e. The answer in here we have. Then among all, we found that e is the tallest. You got there, mother? Come on. So e is the tallest. Then. So likewise, we pick up the first child, first item. That is compared with the other one, asking who is the largest. Right. Then here we found that uh, we compare that with x one. Then we compare this. With. Then who is the largest? Then first one is. That means if this is true, we know that x zero is the largest. Then what we do in this algorithm is, if you find this as the largest, we swap these two positions. That's a bubble swap. Why our target is to put the highest value on the rightmost place? They want to pattern out again. You can make strong lazy and correct. පළවෙනි පාස් එකේ මොකද පුතේ කරන්නේ අපි මේ සෙට් එකේ ඉන්න ලොකුම එක්කනා හොයාගෙන එහා කොනට ගිහින් දානවා ඕකන කරන්න ඒක කරන්න කරන මෙතන දෙක තමයි ඉස්සරෝම අයිටම් එක ඉස්සරෝමින් අයිටම් දෙක කම්පයා කරන්න කම්පයා කරලා බලන ඒ දෙන්නේ ලොකු කවුද කියලා 20 is larger if so should 20 be here or should i move this 20 to the right uh, next right column i have to move it to move that i am going to do that uh, along with the two values now then uh, what i do is i swap them i do the swap thanks swapping karanne kohoma hundena maaru karanne kohoma think of the program then can i say that x0 equals x1 and can i say that x1 equals uh, x0 me ho gaya maaru enna ऐन आते भाई ना 
एक बात सीखी मैंने तब कौन की उद्दम पाट लगाना हर एक बात सीखा डेस ऑफ कर हर सॉफ्ट कर ना बेटा देन आफ्टर सॉफ्टिंग योर लिस्ट विल बी लाइक दिस बुत अलग यूज़ द सेम लिस्ट इन अ स्मॉल साइज़ अदरवाइज आवर वैल्यू सेट इज़ ट्वेंटी नाइन थर्टी टू एंड टेन Okay, so then uh, we check the first two items. X zero is larger than X one. If it is true, we have to solve it. If it is true, we have to solve it. If it was solved, then what is the first item available in my list now? After solving, what is the first item now? Is that twenty zero nine now? Nine, then these two are solved. If I'm nine, then ah, and this is going to be twenty. Uh, then the rest has no any change. Thirteen, two, and ten. They will remain. So I solve this. Then ah, uh, now uh, we solve this. So then he is coming here. Then this item after solving, the first thing ah uh, we pick up this and solve that. Then we compare these two. That means now it is going to be here uh, x two, ne? This is x zero done. Then I will compare this zero one two three four. Then we compare x one with x two. After swapping, this is the position. Then next value is compare with the other value. If this is true, should we swap or not? We have to solve. Ne, a highest has to be moved to the right hand side. Now we solve it. Then uh, this nine will remain somewhere here. Now twenty will go there while thirteen comes from. Then uh, we'll place two and ten will be at the same place. Then this the index is zero, one, two, three, four. Now we came up with this. Then we did this. Now we are going to compare this with the other one. So then we are going to compare now x zero, x one. Then x two is compared with the other number x three. We compare this with the next number x one and two, x zero and one, x two and three. Again, now we are going to uh, compare this thing x two and x three. Uh, if it is true, again we need to solve. So we have to solve here. So this is going to be nine. No change for this one. Thirteen and two comes here. Twenty will be there. Why having ten there? Then the index is still zero, one, two, three, four. Then what is the next comparison? Early we start in zero, one, two. Then which number is compared? X three is compared. Hare. That means uh, this is compared with next number X four. If it is true, again what have to do? Solve them. Then if it is true, still uh, do the solving. Then now we came up with this value well, set nine, thirteen, two, ten, and twenty. So we have reached the end. This is the end of the past one. Did you get the idea? Past one is to find the largest number of the entire list and put that as right most column. We just start from here, finding, finding, and moving into the last. Then that's fine. Oh, there are. When you are going for the second pass, when you go for the second pass, we have to compare these values only, not the last one, which has already gone. Okay. Then I will go for the pass two. Then I will uh, when you go for the pass two now. Uh, now we consider the values. Nine, thirteen, two, ten, and twenty is already gone. So I don't want to worry about this twenty. It's already selected. Then the rest of the values are going to be compared. Again, uh, zero, one, two, three other items. Then what should I do? Now I may uh, do the same thing uh, along with this as well. Only comparing after this, then we take x zero, 
larger than x1 is it x0 is larger than x2 the? no name so then uh, we compare them if so we need to solve it but now no need to solve it okay the same thing if this is true solve if not no solve then here no need to solve it right this is larger than everything then we uh, take the we will go to the next line then 9 13 2 9 13 2 10 and having that uh, 20 they are on the common then 0 1 2 3 4 then now what is next comparison x0 compared with x1 what is next comparison then x1 compared with x2 correct this one i will compare the first two and found uh, the largest moved into the right next person now we compare this with the other number then uh, this and that If x1 is larger than this two, what happens? We have to solve. Then at this moment we have to solve it. Then if this is true, solve. Now in this case no, then uh, therefore uh, no solve, right? No solve. It. If it is not, right? Then here we have to solve that. So my value set is going to be. Nine uh, will remain here. Two comes here. Thirteen and ten while having twenty on the right one. So we don't worry about this twenty. It's already picked up. Right. Then the indexes are going to be zero, one, two, three. Now we had this comparison. Next comparison is going to be x two compared with x three. If this is true, we have to solve. Then we compare x two with x three. Then we need to solve why it is larger than x two. Then uh, we go for nine, two, ten, and uh, thirteen. Then we have twenty. Then isn't this the end of the past two as well? Now this large value, this large value. Are already moved into the rightmost positions. Okay. So then this is the end of pass two. Okay. Then you have to start pass three. This is the pass uh, one, end of pass one. This is the end of pass two. We got it. Now we have to start pass three. No space in the board, but I will try. Uh, I'll use the other side. Me. Now we have to start uh, pass three. When you go for pass three, my uh, value set is going to be nine, two, ten. Thirteen and twenty. So thirteen twenty is already a uh, selector. Then uh, thirteen as well as twenty. But they are still in the same list. I just uh, use a different color to highlight that they were already selected. Then we have to continue uh, the selection with zero, one, two, three, four uh, among these. Then we come as usual x zero with x one. Should we solve now? Yes, we need to solve it. Right? Then, uh, since it is true, we have to solve. Then the the answers will be two, uh, nine, and ten, while having a uh, three and thirteen and twenty. Then uh, the indices are zero, one, two, three, four. And these all there. Right. Then uh, now we have to compare the other two numbers here to there. That is going to be x one compared with x two. Then uh, if it is true, we have to solve. But now uh, not me. 
Why? Uh, but now it's not. Why? This is not. It's not larger than that. No. Therefore, uh, this is the end of the past three as well. Then two, nine. Then these are going to be ten, thirteen, and twenty. Very good. Now this is the end of past three. Got that? Okay. Just fine, right? Just fine. So then we have selected uh, the last two earlier in the past three. Then you are going for the uh, that's the past two. Then past three uh, we have pick up the last three. Then now only two numbers are remaining. Then you have to compare that test. That's the past four. Then you go for past four. Uh, the value set is two nine, and this all is what I. Ten, thirteen, and twenty. Then we have to uh, compare only the first two values. We don't have much more values available. Okay. Then uh, this is zero one. Then we compare x zero larger than x two. If so, we have to. Uh, if it is true, we have to solve. But now no need. Me, it is already there. Uh, therefore, now no need. So since we have only two values, no need to uh, proceed further. Then all the values are sorted now: two, nine, ten, thirteen, twenty. This is the end of pass four. So that uh, the full list is sorted. And are you clear what I did here? Okay. Then, uh, regarding our bubble sort, uh, we can do the sorting in another way as well. If I just go for uh, some set of values like this, we'll say that forty, uh, even a ten, five, thirty, and even eight. There are one, two, three, four, five numbers available. Now I am going to sort this using an another algorithm than what I told earlier. Then. Still, uh, this giving you the bubble sort. Now we'll see how this can be done. At first, we'll take the first number. That means the positions are zero, one, two, three, and four. I'll uh, uh, label this as x, the entire list, the number set. And then uh, what I can do here is I may take the first item. That means x zero. And comparing that value with the other. Right. So then, uh, simply. We will take the first number, and this is going to compare with the rest. Now we want to prepare this into the ascending order. Ascending order. So smallest to largest. Then we may compare these two by taking the first item compared with the second item. Then if it is in the ascending order, now the smallest should come at front end. So we will sort it. So we will do the sorting. And after the sorting, uh, this ten will come at front. Then uh, this is going to be ten. Then the other item is forty. Next item is five. The other item is thirty, and next one is eight. I did. Then again, now I just uh, compare that the first number. Then the first position has been changed. Compared to the earlier comparison, the smaller came to the front. But this is not the smallest from all. Then I may compare this item with the next value. So this is going to be with the item one, zero, one, two, three, and four. This is going to be compared. Then uh, if it is smaller, again we are going to bring that to front. So our comparison is whether this x zero is smaller than x one. Then I am going to compare whether x zero is smaller than x two. I am going to compare the smaller value with the next. This is smaller. So then I may swap it. So now it brings like five. This ten will go there. Forty, ten, thirty, and eight. Fine. Then uh, the zero position has been changed uh, compared to the others. The smaller up to two. One, two, three, four. Then we compare this zero position again with the other number x three. When it is smaller. 
So then this is now we check the earlier position. Now we have to check the next position. Is it smaller? No, why? This is smaller, this is larger. I don't want to swap it. So I'll just keep it like that. Then I will compare the next item 0, x, 4. So then next I'm going to compare with the other item. So this is 0, compare with the other item. Still uh, this is small and so no need to swap it. Then this is the end of pass 1. First pass is over. That means the smallest had been brought to the front. Earlier I brought the largest to the rightmost one. Now I am doing the reverse order. Then uh, this is the leftmost item, the smallest among all the numbers. Then I am going to start the second pass. When I am going to the second pass, this item that is already the smallest, I just leave it. And compare the other numbers and finding the smallest, bringing the smallest into the front. Right. Then uh, what I do is, early I compared with 0th item. Now I am going to compare the 1th position with the other numbers. So the first comparison is, I may compare x1 with x2. Right. Then uh, this 5 will be kept as it is. Right. One, uh, then uh, 1, 2, 3 and 1 more to count. Right. Then, uh, 1 is going to be compared with 2, then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So then this is already smallest. I don't want to check what on this one. I found it. Then from the rest, I may found the smallest and bring that into the first position. Then here, now I'll just uh, write 40, 10, 30, and 8. Then among them, I'm going to compare this x1 with x2. Should I uh, do the swapping? Yes, A. This is quite large. X1, the one position is compared to 2. Yes, it is. Then I have to swap it. So now I am going to do the swapping. Then after swapping, you are going to get uh, the value set. Uh, 5 will be here. Then 10 will come front. While 40 goes there. Then 30 as well as 8. Hi. Then next comparison is X1 position. The first position is always compared now in the second pass. So this is compared with the next number for the smallest x1 less than x3. Is it? No, I don't want to swap it. Why? This is smaller than this one. Fine. Then I may compare the other number. x1 is compared with x4. So then I may compare the other. x1 is going to be compared with x4. Should I swap it? Yes. Why? 8 is smaller than that. So I am going to bubble that into the first position. So then after that, uh, 5 will remain here and from the rest, the next smaller still uh, brought here, that is going to be 8, then this 10 go there, 40, 30 as well as 10 comes here. Now the questions are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then uh, the second pass is also over. Why? I compare this with the rest of the numbers. Pass 2 is done. Pass 2 is over. Then I have to continue the pass 3. Third pass. Again, we know that since we have 5 values, we have to go for 4 passes. Ne? If there are 5 values, then 4 passes has to be there. Right. Then the third pass, I'll uh, start with the uh, numbers I've given. Third pass. Uh, now uh, the number set is going to be uh, 5, 8, 40, 30, and 10. So at the end of the second pass, we have filtered the smallest among the uh, smallest two numbers. Those are fine. Then while keeping them as it is, I need to find the smallest among the rest. So that the positions are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now item 2 is going to be compared with the rest of the numbers. At the pass 1, I have compared the 0 item. Pass 2, I may compare the 1 item. Now I am going to compare the second item, x2, is going to be compared with x3. This item. Should I swap it? Yes. Why? x2 is smaller than this thing. Then. So it has to be. Then we have to bring that here. Right. Then uh, now 5, 8, 
40 and 10. We want to bring the smallest to the left since it is going to be in the ascending order. Right. Then uh, we compare that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now uh, the second item, these two saw, second item is compared with the other number to, uh, for the comparison. So should we solve it? Yes, 10 has to uh, brought front. Then uh, 5, 8, 30, 40, sorry. So this place should be 10, this place uh, should be 30. Right. Then uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I have compared it to all the numbers, right? Now second item is compared with the rest. That means I have filtered the smallest three numbers at, front, at first. Then this is the end of the third pass as well. Pass 3. Now I have to go to the pass 4, fourth pass, that is comparing the rest of the numbers. So if I am rewrite this again, 5, 8, 10, 40 and 30, these are the items. First 3 were already arranged. Then I have to take uh, x3, third item, whether it is larger than x4. So that's the only uh, comparison I have to do. These two have to be compared since these were already arranged. Now uh, should we solve it? Yes. Then after that these coming up like 5, 8, 10, 30 and 40. This is the sorting next. So this is the end of the uh, pass 4. That's the sorted set. This is pass 4. Uh, that's the complete sorting next. Complete sorting work. So the full sorting is completed by this time. This is an another way where we can arrange the bubble sort. So earlier I said you how to pop up the highest to the rightmost. Then highest, next highest, next highest, and smallest. Now we are going to reverse sort. We are filtering the smallest to the leftmost, next smallest, next smallest, next smallest, and automatically is being arranged. So this is what the bubble sort arrangement. So when you write the relevant programming uh, or the Python program, we have decide whether to follow this method or the other method. Right. So if you go to the method uh, given in our uh, 2011 paper, we'll just discuss how they are going to do that. So this this incomplete uh, Python code. So then uh, this one we just uh, skip it. Now I'm going to explain this uh, coding here. Uh, for the moment, when we are going along with this coding, you find that there are two for loops available. We'll come to the lesson today, right? This is a work for the day. Now, there are four loops. Then, did you see a change in these four loops? The second for loop is inside the first loop. If so, this is going to be uh, executed in a way. Uh, I think I have done uh, this sort of questions earlier. How to execute whenever you have a loop inside a loop? I will say for uh, x in range uh, 0 to 3. You understand what this means? This is very simple. All right. I can say uh, print x. I won't do the sorting part here. This is a basement. Now, what is the output of this one? So 4 is uh, ranging from 0 to 3. Again, this is creating values 0, 1 and 2, not 3. Then uh, print x means this is giving you 0, 1, 2. They are outputs. That's okay for everyone. Now the next thing is, I am going to include another loop inside this. That is something like this. 4 y in range uh, y in range 5 comma 8. Then what is going on here? Now I am going to say that print x. Understand that how this is going to be work, uh, how this is going to work. Now 
this part, this range 0 to 3 will handle 0, 1 and 2. This is the prepare values. What are the values that it creates? 5, comma, 6, comma, 7. Those values are there. Then uh, here I am going to say that print x. Now what would be the output? Print x and be careful. These are separate incident. Now we will see how this is going to work. Listen, concentrate now. Then at the very first time when you go to the execution, this will get executed. When is it going to get executed? X will take the first value of this 0. So now x is 0. When x is 0, don't we go into the loop? That's the nature of the loop, right? So loop means we go to the first value of the range and with that value we jump into the loop. When you go in, now with the value 0, I am coming into the statement of the 4. How many are When you go for 4, um, I in range um, 2 to uh, 5. Then I say that print x, print i, print hello, whatever thing. Then uh, the way we run the for loop is this is creating a value range 2, 3, 4. So I will take the first value 2 and with that we go in and execute this. Then you go to the next round, take the next value of i3 and go in. That's the order how the for loop works. Okay, not now here we say that 4, x is 0 at the first time, with that 0 we come in. When you go in, this is meeting with not print statement, not input statement, another loop. So now we are going to start the uh, second loop, but still we are at the first iteration of the first loop. First iteration of the first loop. I will come across 1 and 2. I am at the 0 iteration. Then I come in. This is to go for another loop. Then what happens? Now it says that 4 y in range here. Now this is running another loop. Then shouldn't to complete this execution, shouldn't we go along with this, all these statements and then go into the other statement? And I have another statement as well. Um, say that print good. Is this inside the second loop or outside the second loop? Outside the second loop. But isn't this inside the first loop? This print statement inside the first loop. Have a second Now we'll see how this will get executed. Now we uh, came to the first iteration. Now uh, when will this get executed? This print good. After going through all these iterations, we'll come here. Oh, many We will say that now uh, with the value 0, now here we are on starting. Then I may just maintain here x is going to be 0 and we'll have values. So we came to the first round while x is 0. Then uh, here this won't have y. So at the very first time, y is going to be 5. So y is going to be 5 and go in. Then I displace y print x. What will we display? x value. x value here then? 0. So 0 will be out. And then we go to the second round of this one. Why? This loop is not finished. We, go to, we went through the first time here. And then we are coming to the second round. But we are we have started the loop here. You got it. Then at the second round, uh, y comes with the value 6 and then go to the execution. Then again to say that that means x is still 0, the second round of this one having the value 6. Then uh, this is going to display 0, that is going to display 0 here. They are in different different lines. Here. Right. Yes, so we have to go to another line here. Another statement. Still, uh, we are at the first iteration of the first loop. Then this is going to have the next value 7. So 7 is also taken the third value within the second loop. 
and there is also pending x zero will be displayed. Fine. Is that to say that the execution of the second loop is over or not? Second loop finished or not? Finished. Then are we going to the second round of the first loop or should we go to the sprint as well? We have to go to print. Ne? Hey, we have to continue all these statements. Now they have to go to print. Then after this, we will display good. Hurry. Then uh, the first iteration of the first loop is over. Now we are going to the second iteration of the first loop. So then 0 is over, then we are going to 1. Now x is going to be 1 now. And again, we are going along with the statements. With one, we come here. Hurry. That's the second iteration of the first loop. Then uh, when you go in, again, this is creating the second set of values, 5, 6, and 7. Right. This is the second time where it is starting the execution. Then at the first time, y will take the value 5, then print x. What will be the uh, print x then? 0, the 1. It is displaying 1. Right. Then you go to the second round of this one, 6. Again, displaying x, y having the value 6. Uh, that is still displaying one, and then we have another term to continue that will uh, still having the value of x y into uh, seven and displaying another one. Then we come here displaying good. Alright. Now uh, we go to the third equation of this one. That is going to be two. So then uh, x is going to be one, and uh, next one is two. That's the second uh, iteration of the. Third, second iteration of the, no, third iteration of the first loop. With that, we come in. Then again, he is creating next set of values, 5, 6, 7. So at the first time, 5, we come here, display x. So by that time, x is going to be 2, it is displaying 2. Then second time, 6, uh, again 2, and then the other time, 2 and 7. Likewise, it is having another 2 as well. Once it comes to the end, we display good. Then you go to the next turn. Do we have another iteration of the first loop? Oh, that's all. That's all. This one. Okay. So then first understand that how a loop inside a loop works. I did this. Replace print x with print y and c. Good. So in uh, this y. Then what will be the output? Now I want you to generate that. Good. Do that. If it is y, what are the outputs? Again, uh, with 0, we come in. Then y is going to be 0. Now these are way the values are prepared. Now y is going to be 5. Display 5. Eh? So now the output will be 5. Second time, it's going to be 6. Next, 7. And then uh, it comes to this, good, good. And it must say it will go to uh, the second value, one. And why will be going for five? Again, six, seven, again, good. Again, five, six, seven, as well as good. And so then um, this is what? A loop inside the loop, how it is going to work. Right. Keep that in your mind. This is a code given in 2011 in an MCQ. They want what is the segment, what is the code segment coming to this place. So before that, we we'll find the answer. We'll try uh, this code and see. Now, when you go for the initial level, they have given us a list with these values. So there are one, two, three, four values available. List has four values. We need to sort four values. If so, how many passes should we continue? If there are four values, we need to go for four passes. Sorry, three passes. One less than the number of items. Here we have four items. We have to do this along with four passes. So, because of that reason, these people have used two loops. One for loop, second for loop. And you find that second for loop is under the previous for loop. That's also fine for us. And again, if I am to explain this uh, code segment, the inside the second loop, 
you all understand that this is the code segment to solve the numbers or to solve the, the data Sopping. again I told that a uh, little while ago so then whenever we have values here in a list say that is 70 and 80 I want to uh, solve these positions exchange them when I am doing so first thing is I may copy one of the item into a separate extra variable if I call this as x I may put this into another variable called as temp so then into the temp I may put the x0 item and take it out from the list then after copying this into outer world I may bring this 80 into this position that means x0 is going to be replaced by x1 then at this level what happens is into this list the value 80 will come here while this position is also having 80 while I have copied that uh, 1 position into 0 position then this position has to be taken by the earlier number that is 70 right? so then temp has 70 so that I am telling that x1 has to be assigned with temp then as a result of this what happens is x1 so this is 0th question that is already 80 and temp had 70 so 70 will be put into the 1 position now as a result these two were exchanged this is the way to do the swapping so this is one such data i some uh, value here we'll assume that this has i it is going to be put into temp then there are two items in the left hand side I will be assigned with data k here I the first item is assigned with data k so whatever the k value is put into i then k is going to be replaced by the temp that is the previous i so then this is completely a swapping statement when we do the uh, sorting so first I have to have that understanding this is doing the swapping and this is the list given and then we need to find what comes here according to the sorting algorithm right now uh, when you go to the second line it says data count equals len data len means finding the number of items of this list our list is data how many items are there 1 2 3 4 therefore the data count is turning into 4 data count has the value 4 Right. that's the length so if it, ha if it has 4 items we need to have 3 passes to do the sorting that's why they maintain the first for loop for i in range data count so data count is going to be 4 for 4 minus 1 is going to be 3 so then this is a loop which will run for 3 times so indirectly this is just like 4 i in range 3 then again uh, the range function has 3 whenever we have range has 3 it is just like having range 0 to 3 since it has no initial value it has no step value only the last value is there then this will have values 0 1 and 2 so it is repeating for 3 times that's what are the meaning of this statement so i in range data count 3 so it is just like this so then 3 will uh, imply into python goes from 0 to 3 then 0 1 2 3 so this loop will repeat for 3 times implying the 3 passes that we told in our algorithm right then ki now k is another strange variable k goes from i to data count so our data count is all the time 4 and so no problem this all, all, all that I am going for 4 I will change at the first round i is going to be 0 at the first round i is going to be 0 then I will see how this is going to be uh, prepared right? so now uh, i will be 0 I will just I will try this I will run this and see fine then uh, I will execute the code this is a list data count came as 4 for i in range data count 1 then if I have to uh, proceed with the output now uh, here we have i 
value of i, i variable, and then we have the k variable. You see, when the variable i is going to be zero at the initial level, i is going to be zero. Okay, i is zero. While making the i value zero, we go inside the loop. I loop is activated. We are within the range. Name. So i is zero. We go in. After that, another loop is met. That is going from k in range i. I mean zero to four. So then this is going to say that go from range zero to four. So it has values zero, one, two, three. So then. When the i value is zero, this loop is repeating for how many times? One, two, three, four times. This is going to be repeated for four times along with these values, right? We will see when the k value is going to be zero initially zero. What will be the situation? K is going to be zero. Then uh, according to the uh, question here, I'll just use the if statement to explain this. We will say that if uh, data I is greater than data k. Yes, I is greater than data k. Then what happens if data I is greater than data k? Now by this time, uh, according to this statement, this will be if now I is going to be zero. So we check data zero greater than. Data k. What is k now? Still zero. Then what is compared here? We compare whether the data zero is more than data zero. That means we compare the same item. So it's not greater than. We don't need to do any swapping. Just leave it. Then we are going to the second round of this. So that i will remain the same. Now k is going to be a, a one. So then here no change. Fine. Now k is going to be one. K is going to be one means my if statement is I'll rewrite this again clearly. Data zero greater than data. Now k is going to be one. So data one. What is that comparison? Data zero is five. Data one is this one. Then according to our sorting algorithm, should these two be swapped or not? Need to swap, ne? Aye. The smaller should come to front to sort them in ascending order. So then I will bring this into one. So this is true now, so that the swapping has to be taken place. Then the if statement has to be greater than here. Should that be less than or greater than? If I put it as less than, what happens? If it is less than now, we check whether five is less than one. That means first item is smaller than that one. Then not the swapping should be taken place. No, 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 no. Smaller should be coming into front. Therefore, if you write this statement, that's wrong. We have to write it like this. Then, now it's fine. According to this idea, data zero is five. Data one is the next item. This is smaller. So earlier one is bigger than the second one. So we have to uh, rearrange them. Now uh, rearrange is going on. So then uh, we have to do the solving. Right. So if I'm uh, writing the answer on the corner now, here we have five, uh, one, twenty-three as a less than the other items. Right. Then uh, under that uh, policy, these two are exchanged. So one will come at one, five will be there, twenty-three and ten is there. That's the next situation. You understand that? So we need to solve it. Right. Then with that solving, we go to the next line. So then, uh, other time uh, this uh, we have to do the swapping. So with the swapping, I'll just uh, rewrite that one, five, twenty-three, and ten will be there. Then uh, we go to the second round of the second loop where the k is going to be two. Now k is going to be two. With that, we will continue. When k is going to be two, i will remain zero. K is going to be two. Now what do we check? The first item. Now first item is uh, not five. It is going to be one now. And we have swap it. Then this is going to be one, two, three, uh, three. Then this is going to be compared with the next item, twenty-three. Should we swap it or no need? No need. By small is at front. Twenty-three is larger than that. So then we check whether zero is now one. Data two is going to be twenty-three. 
is is data zero is going to be one uh, twenty. Is is uh, true? This is not true. Therefore, we don't need to go into the loop, go into the if condition. So no swapping will be taken place. If this is true only, we come into the if statement. So we don't go in. Then no swapping will be taken place for k equals to again no change. This uh, list will be there. Now we go to the next value k is three. Then k is three. Now this is going to be three. Now one is compared with the three item. Then it's going to be ten. Is this true still? No. Now we really we don't want to swap it, right? Why smaller is here? This is smaller than that. No need. Fine. Then still uh, no change. Then isn't that the end of the past one? Why we went along with zero, one, two, three? That's the first pass. So simply we can say that this is the end of the pass one. End of pass one. That's fine. Then uh, that means all the iterations in the second loop were over. Now we are going back to the first loop again. On the first loop, the first value has been already done. That means this going from zero to three. Minutes. So then, uh, yes, then uh, the zero item is over. Now we go to the i becoming one. That means this is going to be a one, not zero. It is going to be one. With one, we go into the loop. Right. Then uh, there we uh, check for k in range. I to data count. What is that then? I is going to be one. It is going to be from one to data count is four. That's a value set. So it is going to create values from one, two, and three. There are three uh, iterations to be continued now. Right. Then we'll say uh, when it is data count, uh, I is is going to be one now. I is one. So there are uh, the range is going to be. Uh, the the k k is going to be uh, from one two three eh? is going to be uh, from one to four so it is going to be one two three the other items then we go to uh, the first item k is going to be one now not zero earlier started from zero eh? then uh, i is still one k is i is one then we come here k is one right. We check that one with one. So this is a recent list. One with one means this is a one item. So that the zero item has already been filtered, the smallest one. That's done. Then we compare the one item with the one type. That's not larger than that. Thing. So we just uh, uh, leave it without any change. So then here again, no change. No change. Then we go to the second round of the second row. There the k item is going to be two. One is one, then k is going to be two. Right. When k is two, we compare the item one. That is going to be uh, the item five uh, with the item two. Item two is going to be twenty-three. Five greater than twenty-three, then no. Why? These two are still in the order. Smallest is at front. Other one is there. No need to copy. Then still uh, no change. Then we go to the next round, making k into three. Right. So then, uh, then no need to solve it. K is going to be three now. Right. Then we compare this item with this. Should we solve it? No need. Hey, five smaller than that one uh, for that one. Then again, uh, no change takes place. Uh, five is compared with ten. Still no change. That means. We have finished the second loop as well. That is the end of the pass two as well. End of pass two. So we have one more pass two. No, uh, yes, one more pass two. That is, we are going to the other round. So by this time, these two values were over. That means the two smallest were done. Fine. Then we have to compare with the other uh, number. They are the i is going to be two now. Earlier I was one, so it was two. Sorry, then uh, this is going to be a uh, uh, two now. Yes, I is going to be two for the next round, right? When it is going to be two, we go in. 
So now uh, the third pass is going to be started with the value 2. Then uh, it is going to be range k value 2 to 4. Range 2 to 4. If so, what are the values? 2 and 3 only. Only 2 uh, items are there. Uh, 2 to 4. Only. So this goes with the values 2, 3. That's all. Then we will uh, come in. Now, I uh, data I is turning into 2 now. And uh, this also going to be uh, 2. Starting from 2. Only. What are the values called as 2? Data 2. Data is 23. Now, these numbers are going to be compared next. That is going to be 23. Data is again 23. So, no need to uh, do any change. So, there are K is going to be starting from 2. Still no change. Then we go to the next round, k is going to be 3. So, uh, then we have comma plus 2, then we go to 3. So, data 3 is going to be 10. So, this is going to be 10. Now, 23 larger than 10 in the yes. So, it's fine, right? We have to bring this uh, to front. Then uh, we need to do the swapping. Yes, it's true. So, now uh, we have to do the swapping. Once the swapping is done, my list is going to be changed as now uh, these two has to be solved. Then it is going to be 1, 5, this brings here 10 as well as 23. Right. So then uh, it is going to be 1, 5, 10 and 23. Right. That's the situation of the uh, list at the moment. So that uh, the second iteration is also over second row. And uh, again we are going back to the third uh, one why it has values up to 3. That's the fourth pass, but uh, we don't this end of the end of pass C. Really, according to the algorithm, we need to have only three passes. But uh, according to the program, we will go to the next round as well with the value 3. When you go to the next round with the value 3, we come to the second one that is going to be uh, K in range 3 to 4. It's going to be range 3 to 4. So 3 to 4 means we have only one value, that is 3. So we go only for uh, one round. So we have only 3 available. If that, if you come here, data i is going to be 3, this is going to be 3, we compare with the same item, the third item. 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is not larger, no need to swap it, then now that's over. Right? So then finally, our value list is sorted in this uh, situation, that is what the proper sorting algorithm here according to the 2011 MCQ paper. Hope that you understand that. Right? Now, this program uses two loops. First loop is representing the passes we are going to continue. These are the passes. How many passes? I. And inside the pass, we are going to have the comparisons. So, those comparisons are still reducing along with the filtered passes by once you filter the first item, we are going to compare only the next. Once you filter the first two, we have to compare the next two. Once you filter the first three, no items to be considered. Right? So even uh, the same thing can be done in the other way around, the one I told earlier, filtering the highest value to the rightmost one. Still you can think of an algorithm for that one as well. Now I believe that this algorithm or this program is fine and uh, clean for you.